Welcome to Paywood. My name is Mary Helen. I'm a nurse practitioner with Stedman Hawkins, and I'm going to give you some information on how you can better prepare for your upcoming shoulder joint replacement surgery. Paywood is recognized by the Joint Commission in the care and management of total shoulder and reverse total shoulder joint replacement. We have also received numerous awards for our care here. These are just a few of the awards that we have received in the last several years. And these are our shoulder surgeons, Dr. Tolan, Dr. Pill, and Dr. Kissenberg. With any surgery, you want to prevent infection. So uh, with preventing infection, there's some things that you all as patients can do. And I'll tell you some more things later on about what we can do to prevent infection for you as well. But the easiest and probably the most important thing that you can do is good hand washing. So make sure you do wash your hands, scrub them with soap and water for 20 seconds, or you may sing the happy birthday song to know that you've done it long enough. Also, if you are uh, shaving your arm, please don't, under your arms, please don't shave for at least three days before surgery. That can lead to nicks and cuts and other uh, portals of infection. You've been given instructions or will be given instructions from your pre-assessment nurse on how to shower properly with Dial Soap, HibaCleanse, and CHG wipes. So make sure that you do follow those instructions that they will give you. You also want to avoid any activities that might damage the skin of your surgical extremity for one to two weeks prior to surgery. So if you're working out in the yard or using tools, anything like that, or if you have uh, pets that like to jump up on you, make sure that, again, you are protecting the skin of your operative arm before you are coming back in for surgery. This is a copy of the skin prep tip sheet that your nurses will go over with you or, or have done already. So they are dated for you and it goes over in detail how to use the CHG wipes and the HIPAA cleanse. Also, we want to focus on good nutrition between now and surgery time. So it's better if you can fuel your body with what we call whole foods. Those are foods in their more natural states, such as uh, your fresh or frozen fruits and vegetables, low fat dairy products, lean meats. And uh, those are better choices as opposed to processed foods or things out of a box. So make sure you uh, make a good choice. If you have a choice between an Oreo and an apple, choose the apple. So we also want you to think about uh, fueling your body properly before surgery. So the night before surgery, I don't want you to drink to, uh, excuse me, to have a heavy meal, but preferably a more lighter meal with some of those uh, previously mentioned foods on the other slide. But you'll have your lighter meal anytime between uh, say four and 8 p.m. That usually covers most everyone's dinner time. And then anytime between eight and midnight, I want you to drink your two bottles of Ensure. So this is Ensure pre-surgery clear carbohydrate drink. This is a specially formulated drink uh, to help fuel your body and prepare it for surgery. So um, these are general instructions that I'm giving you. You do want to follow the appropriate instructions that your nurse will give you in pre-assessment. But this Ensure does reduce nausea and vomiting after surgery, reduces insulin resistance, and ultimately to your time in the hospital. So again, two bottles the night before surgery and then one bottle the morning of surgery up to three hours before your arrival time. So if you don't know your arrival time, we will call you with that time from the office. But for example, if we tell you to be here at 10 a.m., then you'll want to drink that third bottle at uh, any time before 7 a.m. So make sure you do that. Also don't eat or drink anything besides the inshore after midnight the night before surgery. If you do need to take some medication the morning of surgery, you may do that with a, a few small sips of water that's outside that three hour window of drinking fluids. The Ensure, uh, if you're a type two diabetic, but you are not on insulin, then you may drink just the one bottle of Ensure up to uh, three hours before the arrival time, the day of surgery. Again, this is a specially prepared Ensure. It is strawberry flavored, so it actually tastes like strawberry jello. And you can put it in the refrigerator, so it does taste better cold. All right, so the day of surgery, you'll check in at the front desk. We'll have you swing by the business office and sign all of your consents and your paperwork. And we will escort you and one family member up to the surgery waiting area. 
we see your uh, nurses or talk to your nurses and they will review with you the current visitation policy. When they are ready for you, they will call you into pre-op. They will have you change into a hospital gown. They will uh, give you an ID bracelet. They'll check your vital signs. They'll give you some medications. They'll start an IV and do further surgical skin prep on that shoulder, usually with the CHG wipes. You'll be met by a member of the operating room team and they will discuss anesthesia with you. And then your surgeon is also going to come by and he will initial whichever arm he's going to operate on and answer any final questions that you might have. Uh, one last thing that you will do before you go back to the operating room is to get up and empty your bladder. That's gonna be beneficial for you, obviously. Once you get into the operating room, we of course will observe sterile technique. Uh, we try to limit the traffic coming in and out of the operating room. Uh, we will do something called a surgical timeout. What that means is the surgeon, right before he makes the initial cut, he will uh, say, hey, I've got Jane Doe here in the room. She's going to have her left shoulder replaced and anything else that's uh, pertinent to your care, like any allergies or anything like that, he's gonna share with everyone in the room. That way they know their role in your care. Also at this point, you will get your first dose of IV antibiotics. If you uh, remain in the hospital overnight, which most of you all will, then you will get uh, two other doses of IV antibiotics while you're here in the hospital. You may have a urinary catheter placed if indicated, and you're usually in surgery for uh, one to two hours. While you're in surgery, we do ask that a care partner stay in the facility during your surgery. They are welcome to uh, come to your room on the second floor and wait there. Uh, nursing staff will keep your uh, care partner updated throughout your uh, surgery, and the surgeon will usually come by to the room and speak with family uh, after your surgery is complete. Next, we'll move you into the PACU or the recovery room. There we will monitor your vital signs. We will uh, give you cold therapy. You'll have a sling on, you'll use SCDs and I'll show you pictures of those next. We'll give you something to keep you comfortable, something for nausea, and we'll review the nerve catheter, have that in there for you, and you're usually in the recovery room for a little over an hour. Some of the equipment that you may have on you would be uh, the SCDs. Those are sequential compression devices. Those are sleeves that go in your lower leg and they squeeze and they alternate and they keep the blood flowing to prevent blood clots until you are able to get up for the first time. You also see the sling that uh, you will be wearing at all times. That's gonna be really important to keep that uh, kind of front and center of your body. You want to be able to look down and, and see your elbow right there and your physical therapist and nurses will review with you the correct position of that sling. Something that's going to be very important for you to use as well as the incentive spirometer. That's a, a little machine. You take a good deep breath in with that. You help expand your lungs and prevent pneumonia. Because most of you will be getting a nerve block that uh, does kind of interfere with your breathing and it makes your diaphragm lazy on the side in which you have the nerve block. So it's gonna be really important to use the incentive spirometer. Again, take good deep breaths in with that. You want to inhale, that's gonna move that little yellow a device or a little yellow ball inside the incentive spirometer and help expand your lungs. So your nurses will review with you how to use that. Uh, you may take that device home with you and continue to use that to help expand your lungs. And then finally, we have the cold therapy wraps. So these are gonna be very beneficial for you as well to provide pain relief and prevent swelling. Uh, with these wraps, you will get uh, four gel pads. So you use two gel pads at a time. You also will have a freezer for the gel pads in your room on the second floor. So two to wear, and then you'll have two more to use uh, that will be in the freezer. So family can help you uh, rotate those gel pads out. Uh, you may use those at all times when you're here at the hospital. Once you get back home, it's really a matter of comfort for you. But I would think that these... Uh, are beneficial for most people and they do like to wear these at all times. So we'll show you how to use that as well. Next, you'll be moved out to the short stay surgery unit. There you'll be in a private room. We will do something called bedside shift report. What that means is the recovery room nurse that will bring you out to the nursing unit 
and give your nurse a report, basically telling them who you are, what surgery you had done, maybe what medications they gave you. And that uh, report will be repeated at shift change, which is seven o'clock at night and 7 a.m. in the morning. We will also give you a patient education booklet and we will uh, review bladder management education. So you, you may uh, have a little trouble going to the bathroom uh, after you first come out of surgery. So uh, we may scan your bladder with an ultrasound machine just to make sure that your bladder is not overly full. So if you have more than 300 cc's of urine in your bladder, then our nurses may put a catheter in, drain your bladder and take that right back out. Uh, we don't have to do that as much anymore, but I want you to be aware of that and that we uh, do have the ultrasound machine to keep a tab on that. We wanna prevent any problems. We use a comfort management scale like the one pictured below to help us manage your comfort. So our goal is to keep you comfortable, but not necessarily pain-free. However, most of our patients are very comfortable with their pain level being between zero and four on the pain scale. That is uh, what we aim for. So if you find that your pain is increasing, please uh, reach out to your nurse and let them know, and they will be able to adjust your medication uh, to keep you a little more comfortable. There are narcotics available for you, but there are side effects to narcotics such as constipation, nausea and vomiting, dizziness, or lightheadedness. So our nurses do a very good job at trying to find what narcotic works best for you. And they are, the narcotics are not automatically given, but again, if you do need something additionally for pain, besides certain scheduled medications that our nurses give, then please uh, contact your nurse and she will uh, talk with you about that. We do use several things to keep you comfortable. Uh, we give you anti-inflammatory medications if you can take those. We continue a Tylenol regimen around the clock every six to eight hours of uh, Tylenol. And we recommend that after you get back home. You want to continue with the cold therapy wraps. The oral narcotics are available for you. And your peripheral nerve catheter, uh, you'll be given more information about that uh, as well. There are various apps for relaxation and sounds that you may look at to uh, reduce discomfort and anxiety as well. Uh, those are very good with doing deep breathing exercises, uh, meditation, or uh, things like that to help you naturally reduce your, um, your discomfort and your pain. So our nurses can give you that if you are interested in that as well. This is the peripheral nerve catheter, which most of you will get. When you come out, um, of surgery, you will have a full nerve catheter. That nerve catheter has some anesthesia medicine in it and it will slowly uh, uh, go in through the tubing into your shoulder by gravity. It usually takes it about 48 hours for it to empty out. And you see the picture of the empty, uh, empty canister or container there. It's a local anesthetic mixture that uh, will be located near your nurse to help with pain after surgery. So uh, it will help with pain control. You may additionally need some oral medications, but uh, hopefully we will have you pretty comfortable when you get ready to go home and, and you will receive instruction on what pain medicine you can take after you get home. Now, your family will be instructed on how to remove this nerve catheter prior to discharge. It's pretty simple. Uh, they will just uh, remove the nerve catheter uh, tubing and just put a band-aid on that little site and just throw the entire nerve catheter away. But you'll be given more detailed instructions on how to do that before discharge. This is the uh, chart of the apps for relaxation and meditation that I mentioned earlier. So again, you may uh, look at any of these apps and download these on your phone or your tablet for uh, meditation, deep breathing exercises, uh, calming music that you can listen to to help uh, naturally reduce your anxiety and discomfort by providing you with uh, letting your body uh, release the natural endorphins to help with that. Some people like to look at YouTube videos, so you may look up singing bowls or relaxation. And you are at risk for falling once you're here at the hospital. So we've given you medication, you're connected to uh, your IV to your SCDs. Sometimes having shoulder surgery does cause your balance to be a little bit uh, altered. So 
Uh, if you need to get up for any reason, do not try to get up on your own, but please call us with the call lights that are located on your bed rails and we will come and help you get up to the restroom or up to the chair. Again, as I mentioned before, uh, balance is sometimes an issue with shoulder surgery. You may feel unsteady uh, when you're walking or standing due to the narcotics. Uh, you'll have the nerve block and the sling and all those things can possibly uh, alter your balance. So again, please ask for assistance before you get up and walk, even if you don't have any trouble doing that uh, before surgery. Uh, most patients do go home the day after surgery. We may order some lab work, so we'll check that. You should be on oral medication by the time you're ready to go home, and everyone will uh, most likely see a physical therapist. So everyone has their own individualized physical therapy plan. Again, we want to make sure that you can walk around safely. Uh, you'll be giving more instructions on the use of your arm. You're really not gonna be doing any shoulder exercises, but just hand, wrist, and elbow exercises, and your physical therapist will review that with you. Uh, going home, again, you should be uh, mobile, but you are not going to be able to use that arm for a number of weeks, probably at least uh, four weeks after surgery, if not longer than that. So it's good to have a care partner around to help you with bathing and dressing, putting on your sling, using your, uh, your cold therapy wraps, all those types of things. And uh, they'll want to drive you around as well if you need any to go to any appointments, any things like that. Um, it's important to note that um, the side effects of narcotics could be constipation. So to avoid that, um, you want to increase your fluids, eat good fruits and vegetables, uh, make sure you're up moving around, not laying in the bed all the time. An over-the-counter stool softener would be a good idea to have that or a laxative at home on hand just in case you need that as well. Before uh, your, uh, future medical appointments or any procedures with your dentist, urologist, or gastroenterologist, our surgeons recommend that you let them know that you've had a total joint replacement. So there is a risk of infection with any of those invasive procedures. So for example, with your dentist, um, you have a lot of bacteria in your mouth. You may kind of swallow some of that bacteria, even if they're just cleaning your teeth. So again, let your dentist know that you have had your joint replaced. They should prescribe an antibiotic for you to take about an hour or so before your appointment. That is for any routine cleanings or any dental procedures. So most of the dentists are comfortable with prescribing antibiotics for you. If not, you may contact the uh, surgeon at the office and they'll be glad to call in a prescription for you as well. Right now, the surgeons do recommend that you take the antibiotics for life to prevent any infection. Uh, that's gonna be probably uh, in your best interest. It's better to be safe than sorry. And again, I mentioned therapy briefly, but your therapist will uh, perform an initial assessment to develop your individual plan of care on the day of surgery or the following morning. So they will instruct and assist you in the exercises for your hand, wrist, and elbow. Again, you're not gonna be doing any uh, shoulder range of motion exercises for quite a while. They will teach you how to get out of bed, to stand and walk with your sling, assess your walking and your balance, which is really important. They'll teach you how to apply, remove and adjust your sling as well as your cold therapy wraps. And they'll review any home instructions for you, shoulder precautions, your cold therapy and any home exercises uh, before you are discharged. Respiratory care is also very important with um, this shoulder surgery, like I mentioned earlier. Nerve blocks or interscaling blocks can result in uh, respiratory disturbances in about 20% of patients. So uh, we ask, our respiratory therapist may ask you if you snore, if you feel tired, if you have any issues like that, do you have high blood pressure? And they will rate you uh, on your risk for uh, developing any respiratory problems. So they'll do that stop bang questionnaire or have you do that and make sure that you don't have any problems there. We want to avoid any uh, potential dangers with uh, you having trouble breathing after your shoulder surgery. As I mentioned before, you will have the incentive spirometer and your nurses will review with you uh, how to do this appropriately. 
And if you have any questions, you may uh, always ask your pre-assessment nurses and they will be glad to uh, assist you in any way. Thank you for choosing Prisma Health Patewood Hospital. And we look forward to seeing you when you come for surgery.